Hello and welcome to Same Same But Different, episode two. Hello, everyone. Are we just going to be chilling about this forever? Like, is there a script here? Hi, right, my name's Kev McLeod. I write music. <laughs> no, there's no yeah, script. At least, at least today okay. we have some things to talk about that are real. <laughs> real things. <laughs> I think tripping over ourselves is wonderful. People are like, oh, we're normal people. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. None of that is true. <laughs> I use that term loosely. Yeah, as a Norwegian <laughs> guy with a neck tattoo with a dragon thing. Yeah, it's not gonna Oh yeah, that's like that I guess. I guess that's not here. <laughs> what? A neck tattoo with a dragon? That's like that's what you get for your birth uh, and Norway. That's I mean it if I was gonna say anywhere in the world, yeah, probably it would be Norway, so <laughs> I have a lot of things to talk about today. Awesome. As none of you may know, I just converted my entire setup from a Windows setup to a Mac setup. <laughs> <laughs> my first thing to say about it is that I, it's clear that the Mac is built for this kind of stuff and the Windows is not. Yeah. Okay. I do have some problems though. Should okay. I, should I address Yeah. Mac, Mac is known to be creative friendly for a long time. So. The reason you switched over is because Logic is just a killer app, yeah. right? And you can't get that on Windows, so. I uh, think that Cubase is a lot more resource-hungry than Logic is. At least it's mm. like it, because there are Definitely. a lot of things you have to do to be able to play like these big VST instruments like uh, Cine samples, stuff like ah, that. Yeah. So I was pressing like two keys at once, and then I had a disk peak of 100 plus percent. Wow. So it was just, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. frustrating. Beyond all, <laughs> all belief. Yeah. So my first experience was that, okay, I regret everything I've done changing my studio because before it worked, now it doesn't work, but it turns out I'm just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. So, so the first Fair. thing yeah. I did was downloading everything, like two, three terabytes of samples and instruments and plugins and everything onto my drive. Then I yeah. realized that these drives come in a format called XFAT, which is a Mac with oh. hybrid form. Yeah. They do not transfer data very, 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 very goodly. Oh, no. So I had to so gonna... the whole thing and do it again. It changed uh, into ZFS? ASPF or something? ASPF? Oh, okay. It's I don't like, know. It's like what they recommended for, for Mac. Anyway. Oh, okay. God. Oh, so you're talking about the external drives. Yes. That you're, okay, so six hours of dragging things around and then another <laughs> save. <laughs> like about two minutes of deleting everything I've done for the past six hours and then another six hours of doing it again. There you go. I'd Is see. it working now, though? It's working now. Okay. Library management, I would say, is sometimes a big chunk of what we do. Like, uh, <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous. I have one of these, <laughs> Alex. Um, you can see here, it's a SanDisk. Yeah. Um, four terabyte. Yeah. It's solid state, and I have two of them. I have the one I use, and then I have the backup. Yeah, so just... these run, um, I think they're two, two gigabytes per second. the access. Yes, yeah. yes. <clears throat> and they, uh, they're very reliable. Yeah. Extremely reliable. Yeah. Um, Hence the so price. You, yeah. Yeah, they weren't what well, they weren't cheap, but storage is not cheap. but access speed and storage, yeah. you, you just need it, you know. Yeah. So I have a I have a two terabyte one gigabyte transfer and a four terabyte two gigabyte transfer, mm. and that's all the ports I have on the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I bought a docking station. Not enough re yes. research was done before buying that docking station. That that that. That thing is useless. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a couple of them. Uh, I don't use any of them anymore. <laughs> you don't use any? No, I use them to... Uh, I don't even have a... I don't even think I have a USB hub on it anymore. Yeah, no, I just got rid of all the stuff that was connected to it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <gasps> That's also a thing, though, going from Windows to Mac. I think I removed about mm. 200 meters of cable. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's a lot of cable. cable. Yeah. It's insane. So that's cool. wow. But that's yeah. yeah. All these I have a docking station that I use. Yeah. That has uh two inputs on it. One for up to two terabyte chip that you can add that's an extension of your, your main hard drive on your computer. Yeah. Okay. And then there's enough 
for another bigger chip that's up to four terabytes that you could use to back up your song data, your, again, your sound library if you want, whatever you want. It's cheap. It's like less than a hundred bucks. Remind me yeah. after yeah. we post yeah. a link to it. Yeah, I'll we'll send you a link. So my, the docking station I bought turned out, I thought it was like a thing you just placed your Mac mini on top of and then it connected. Mm. It turned uh -huh. out this one is connected with a USB-C plug from the docking station to the Mac mini. Uh -huh. uh, so it takes up one USB-C slot, uh -huh. then it has one USB-C slot in the front. So I'm just trading off the USB-C slots. I have two still. <laughs> It does other things too, right? It's it not has, just a It has a M2, M2 hard drive slot underneath, so that's kind of sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I ended up disconnecting it because, like, I think the the transfer speed gets slower if my external high, hard drive is connected to the docking station rather than directly into the Mac. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because that has to go through, like, two, two processes. Yeah. yeah. My library is direct connected in that USB 3.0. Yeah, right, right off the face, because yeah. I have, I think I have two of those on the face of my iStudio, so um, I must have an extra couple of them yeah. that I don't even realize I have. So yeah, anytime you can direct connect is probably ideal. Yeah, so I just, I just removed it completely, <clears throat> and it has like this uh, uh, SD card and micro SD card slot in front. So if I ever need that, I'll just hook it up and use that instead. The way you're describing it, you may have the same docking station I have. It may it just be that... Like a USB-C cable in the back that you connect. Yeah, I think thing. I think I did have to dock it in with the 3, the USB 3, just like you were, you were describing. Um, and it's the, I think it's externally powered too. So this, one the the, um, this one's externally powered and it has to lock in to... The com yeah, obviously it has to lock into the Can we just stuff. find them? Just pause the recording, find them. I'm going crazy listening to you people thinking about, oh, it might be this, it might be that. Just <laughs> find the way. Pick up the uh, thing. Show uh, it to me. When that's the good part of editing. We can just edit the part out where I'm leaving. That's right. <laughs> Mac. Yo. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. US. Getting, we're on video, so we can actually show. Yeah, show that's the, yes. the thing I bought. It's the same. I think it's the same. Here, invert it so I can see the plugs. Yeah, it's close to what I have. It's close to what I have. There's it's a bunch close. on the back. Okay, there's a bunch on the back of that one too. Um, I can't show you because it's functional right now, but um, there's a whole bunch of of connectors on the back of mine in addition to the face. Yeah, so this... So, so same form factor, but that's... Correct. Yeah. This is what yeah. I get extra when docking it in. Right. Okay, I get, I get I much get more that than that with mine. Because I already take up <laughs> my Mac Mini with this one. Right. Right. And we, right. And we don't know what speed that is either. So. Right. Or maybe we do. Should it have a little... doesn't matter. Do you have, the, <laughs> do you have like this M2 slot on yours? I do, but I also have a larger one as well and it's internal it's like on the top on the inside so it's encased okay. <clears throat> so it makes no sense that this was about twice the price as yours because yours is clearly better <laughs> <laughs> Qu quizalab is the name of the company that i used okay. um and uh, i will satechi let's see i don't know i'm sure you find Fine designer of Mac things. I don't know. You're probably not going to buy that in the Apple store. Nope. Uh, this is uh, uh, aftermarket. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a good idea to kind of maybe go to the Apple store and see if they have the thing first. And you're like, oh, well, it's three times the price, but it you never get disappointed. <laughs> right. Yeah. I said that to you in the, in the discussion thread for the meeting room. All right, so now that that is on the road to recovery, uh, what what's your next Mac problem? My next Mac problem is clearly the the key shortcuts, <laughs> because you need to know them to have a efficient workflow. Yeah, and on yeah. Windows, I have mastered them one hundred percent. So uh, going from that to not knowing shit is uh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, 
It's like picking up like a like a ukulele when you're used to guitar. It's like that. these strings are in the wrong place. It's like just functionally, <laughs> it's the same, but it's completely different, kind of. Right, right. And why they placed the command next to the spacebar instead of just at the end? Just why do you have to try to be different? You know, I think they might have beaten the other guys to the punch on that. They might have been first. Okay. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's, that's really good. <laughs> You're just a little used to Windows. Yeah. Um, Another thing is the file file management because that's very much different but i think yeah it's easier it is that multi-column view the windows just doesn't have anything like it yeah mm. it's it's so good yeah it's definitely better and i think that once like because music production is hard you know because you have to place all these different plugins and different folders and different locations and uh one thing you can do in Cubase is that you can scan custom libraries for uh, third-party plugins. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that in Logic. Logic just has like a place where it's stored, and that's it. Right. Yeah. Well, you can change where the libraries are. Like, if you want to change like where your contact stuff is, move to an external driver, or use a temporary thing, you can do that. Okay. Because the thing I did... But most of the time, it's just fine. Yeah, that's that's what I realized. But the thing is that I want to have most of my stuff on external hard drives because that's where I have the space. Yeah. Right. Uh, install. I got libraries in multiple places. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you just have to give it multiple addresses. Yeah. To let it know where to look for it. You know and what I mean? For VST instruments, that's usually fine. But for mm -hmm. plugin effects, that seems ah. very hard. Yeah. Because like I have like a bunch of uh, guitar amps and stuff like that that I yeah they're not huge in size but I wanted them on the oh you're gonna say yeah so yeah when I it... installed them and and ch chose the library on my external drive Logic or yeah. Cubase just didn't find it mm. so yeah what I would recommend is install it on your normal thing in the normal system folder where it scans for all that stuff. And then put a copy of the installer on your external drive. Because that's what you're going to need, like, when you get a new computer anyway. That's true. Right. So, yeah, just grab the installer, throw it on the external drive. I have a lot of installers on my external drive. I don't have the effects that you have, but... Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Installers. That's smart. Yeah, because it's going to be a pain when and when you know your computer gets eaten by a moose or whatever happens in norway so <laughs> that happens yeah i'm sure it's just probably more often in norway stick <laughs> stick their massive head in into inside the window <laughs> <laughs> their 12 foot shoulder you know uh, not again <laughs> so yeah that's, uh, but are you liking the are you liking the new computer so far other than the learning curve? I'm loving it. My uh, my next big cha uh, challenge is going to get my entire project folder from my computer to my Mac, try to load up an old project and see how many errors I get. Probably more than I can count. Wait, what we're using what app? Cubase. Oh, you got your Cubase for the Mac. Yeah, I got both. Because I want oh, to be able yeah. to load up my old projects because I get like uh, uh, and change uh, and everything all the time. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I get, uh, I got a thing. It's like, hey, do you, you know, you got the project file. It was something that I wrote in like 2015. Right. And it's like, I want yeah. this, but I don't want the singer on top of it. It's like, well, that project file is gone. Um, probably. But I can take it and go to lalal.ai. Yeah. And just rip the vocals out. It's like, here you go. You're you're lucky you got that request. I got that request. Yeah, they didn't say pull out the oboe. Right. Because there's no there's no oboe button. <laughs> <laughs> no. But oboe. the fact that some of the things can be solved by that now is really great. Yeah. But I think that's like I, I think there are apps where you can like 
upload a mp3 file and then you can like pull down a fader on guitar and drums and vocals and everything mm, okay um i think i used it once but i i will find the name of it eventually okay yeah. but it worked and it was like weird like, how <laughs> yeah. to do this because then yeah, like, we'll it. interfering eqs all over the place right yeah, yeah some things fall into the same like sonic space so you could you could be pulling something out of the vocals that was in the same range as say like a string part of the string right. section and then the vocal feels like it's got a hole in it right yeah like there's like this weird thing going on or there's like uh like kevin and i were discovering that there's a little bit of that that low grade mp3 feel from back in the day oh, where yeah. it's like oh it's running through it at some real low bit rate and it kind of like after it processes it, like, kind of pulls something out that you're just like, oh, it's missing something. But that's, the AI is going to fix that in, like, six months. I mean, it's you know? um, usable. Yeah, it is very usable. Yeah. And it, it, I think it'll, they are, uh, Lalo already has their next generation uh, engine. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it apparently is really gooder. <laughs> uh, um, but it's it's not currently the default. I don't have access to it. Right. Uh, I just hear that it's really gooder. Gooder yeah. than the one -er? Gooder than the one they got there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of shit is happening on that. Yeah. That front. Uh, uh, and so fast, so fast. It's hard to even keep up. Yeah. You could watch, you could watch some of these people like Matt Wolf and stuff on all this AI and it's it it's it used to be once a week with him and now it's like three four five updates a week and it's like he, he can't keep he's like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah and I guarantee you that that is that is the highlights because I'm sure he gets ridiculous amounts of uh uh you know announcements and stuff it's like yeah I can't cover that I can't cover that yeah. right it's like hey I made a new chat GPT you want to cover it nah no nah, no time so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not... did it make yeah did it make some major news network you know mm, if it did yeah, yeah let's cover it because obviously it's got some power otherwise like yeah. it's like a ten thousand people trying to mimic the good thing the thing that people are putting <laughs> billions of dollars into mm. okay there's another thing though with logic that i hope that you can solve where is my drum map why is there no drum map is there what no... is a drum map so on Cubase, <laughs> you have basically um, your timeline uh, and then uh -huh. make an event. And then instead of having like long MIDI things, you have like a drumstick that you can like plot in uh, different hits on a drum kit. Oh, uh... got it. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping it exists. Oh, I don't know. Um, because there's editing modes that I never go into, and I think I even hide the buttons to get them. Right. So it's basically um, like just a media event, but instead of having like, uh, like a quarter or eighth or sixteen, there's something, there's something called the loop browser. That in the view, in the view section. Um, why don't you try that? Because that is more in tune and in line with that kind of step editing, like yeah. like drum piece static editing, and uh, it it merges seamlessly with Machine, okay. which is that you know that sixteen pad thing from Native Instruments. Yeah, uh, that may be more in, in line with what you're looking for. Right. But is it because I'm not looking for loops? I I want to make my own loops. Yeah. It does. It sets it up as tracks, though. I haven't explored it a lot, but it's a different way of entering in data. Because so I, I take a look at that. The drum engine okay. in Logic is very good for people who like don't play the drums because you can just yeah. drag flawless uh, beats into the timeline and it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like being a uh, like semi drummer. I kind of like writing the own my own drum MIDI. From scratch, yeah, and in Cubase, yeah. that's extremely easy. Okay, yeah, I think you're gonna have to do it in the um, just the piano roll. Yeah, right. You're saying it was just like a 
like a very limited piano. Yeah, just make it taller. <laughs> it's just basically a uh, MIDI sheet that has like kick, snare, hi-hat, hi-hat open, tom one, tom yeah. one, tom three. Um, yeah. And you just plot in like dots instead of lines. Yeah. Um, and then you can, yeah, of course, change the velocity, et cetera, on them. Okay. I don't, there's something in Ultra Beat, but you should never, ever open Ultra Beat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It is uh, not a well designed okay. instrument. It does a couple of things, like, but just use sampler. I swear to God, uh, Ultra Beat has like some like love that weird stuff in it, and you know everything is mapped, and then you can you can tweak everything, which means that it's a nightmare yeah. for usability. So, <laughs> like, I, I'm I'm sure you can do it in Logic in some way, uh, just by yeah. modifying the MIDI map or something like that. It's definitely do right. It's just I don't know how, and so far I haven't found a solution making it as easy. As well, I was talking to Kevin the other day, and, and about <laughs> that specifically, you acquiring this new piece of equipment, and there's a couple of different resources out there, um, uh, that have like training on it that are outside. I mean, you can go to YouTube and go nuts, but there's some that's spe very specific. Um, it's like mac pro video or something like that I'll, I'll i'll find the link for you but um they specifically focus on musicians that use logic and they have contact training logic training all that yeah so i'm gonna find that resource for you and send it to you because i remember taking classes in it and they were brilliant they were incredibly like detailed you know and they and they're up to date too with the latest and greatest it's not you're not looking at like three four generations right like what when logic came out with logic 10 they completely revamped the software to the point where they turned it into an app as opposed to a software that you load into the system and that app creation created incredible efficiency that's why it doesn't take up hard it doesn't take up a lot of data a lot of memory it's the vsts that gobble up everything oh, yeah. you know um, but that software is an incredibly efficient DAW, nice. and that's why people just gravitate towards it. Yeah, I thought of an absolutely stupid way to maybe do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you set up your project file, and then uh, set it up as like conductor score, so you could have because you can make that look like whatever you want. And then you put in quarter notes and sixteenth notes, but you wouldn't be it wouldn't be on a grid. So you'd mm. have a less but it's in uh, like a fine tune control. Like a music sheet instead. Yeah, it looked like sheet music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just learned that. No, that's not never mind. Don't do that. That it looks that looks at that way. <laughs> that was a stupid way of, of using all the wrong tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I'm sure these two softwares shine in different places. Uh, yeah. So my optimal hope for this is that I'm able to easily bounce project between the two. You know? Yeah. Sure. Because I think that that should be doable, right? It is very doable. Yes. There's a button for it. Of course there is. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a button in Logic for bouncing to Cubase, but not the other way around. Yeah, or you could. I mean, the other way around, you might be able there to bounce out bounce. MIDI info, right? You can, you can, and you can bounce MIDI out MIDI data. Out. Yeah, it's you'll you'll figure it out. I'll figure. It'll it. be awesome. Yeah, be we'll learn more when you know more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's nice getting to that point again, where I'm just like a complete idiot. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> it's humbling to learn something new. You know, it is. It's like oh. Oh, I got to start over. Yeah. But it's like something you master in a uh, master in one place. You just suck at it when you get like, it's, it's like getting a new office. Are you, are you talking about my bass playing? What are you, what <laughs> are you saying, man? I mean, it's kind of the same thing, actually. 
It's like you've been programming. <laughs> Every play is not good. Programming yeah. like awesome bass for twenty years, and then you pick up an actual bass and it's shit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Look, like, you have to work to make it sound good, right? Like whoa, 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 whoa. It's <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's exactly. It doesn't it just. It doesn't just do that, right? That's... And you discover interesting things about the songs that you're trying to learn and play. Like, for example, yeah. Kevin showed me um, Africa from Toto, right? I had no idea how complicated that bass line was. Yeah, I've um, the same thing. And he ripped it. He ripped the bass line out of it using Lolo. And I'm listening to it and I'm like, is that complicated? <laughs> I'm like, I. <laughs> For whatever reason, I never heard it. Yeah, you know, but now having it isolated, that's the beauty of bass. You you don't hear how complicated it is until you pull it out. Yeah, mm. and it does so much to the song too. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it without it, and it's definitely also Africa with just the drums and vocals is haunting. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What drums and vocal? well, just drums and vocal. I should send you it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we can play it here. I just, I think I got it. No, I got a different project up now. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yeah. The harmonies in it and stuff are just beautiful. Yeah, a lot. Of that. Yeah, and there's a weird choir that sings off chords at one point. I'm like, what? Where did this come from? And how? <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, again. Kevin, show don't tell. What are you doing? I gotta stop talking about this. We can talk. We can talk about it another time. <laughs> People can find it if they want to. Yeah, we, we can. Uh, yeah, if you want to. No, it isn't. It isn't. No, I took it to La La. Pulled out the vocals. Pulled out the drums. Pulled out the bass. Pulled out the every. Pulled out the guitars, and then reassembled them however I wanted. Mm. So what I'm learning, I just need to learn with the drum track. And with the bass track for like, I mean, obviously you just play with the bass, you know, like 10 times. Then you add in the drums, pull out the bass, add in the vocals. Where are these things? You know, Jesus. it's a cool, it's a cool process. I like it. I mean, I like it for learning. It, it's, it's pretty slick. It's yeah. Nice way of learning. It is really good. Right. I used to, it's like, uh, I, it's like, I don't care what the bass tab says. That is definitely on a higher string. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, it's not necessarily the that they did it the best way, that they played it the best way possible. No. So <sighs> yeah, it's just a template, I guess. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Learning that way and like tearing apart songs and like understanding how things get mixed. Yeah. It's, like, I know what goes into my mixes, but I hear somebody else's mixes and I go, I have no idea what you were doing. Right. Mm. You know, being able to isolate that stuff and seeing, like, how much of that, you know, sound is coming from yeah. the voice versus the string section. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have... That was something that was popping in the chorus of that Toto song, is that yeah. there was this combination of, there was guitar pieces and something else and the and the uh, harmonized vocals. And I commented to Kevin that specifically what was something was happening with the instruments and the vocals and like the vocals were getting buried in the instrument a little bit. And then when you pulled yeah. it out, you realized there was a lot more going on with the vocals that was just buried in the mix. And I'm like, Oh, that is gorgeous. Right. And that's, that's what that's speaking to what Kevin was saying, the hauntingness of them. They're like, they're really good. Yeah. They're really good. <laughs> I mean, that's, we are, composers and mixers and masters and I, I guess we do all of the things on a medium level but mm. if you have spent 40 years just mixing of course <laughs> you yeah. get way better than we do <clears throat> but yeah I'm I'm unable to like listen to like soloing a track and then figuring out how that's going to blend perfectly into the mix I have to listen to the whole thing and just yeah. analyze the total package while mixing these individual instruments. How about selecting? How about selecting a patch that you're going to use to complement what you've already written? Do you 
do you select it and play a sample over the top of it over and over and over again until you get the right sounding patch? Or do you write the part and then come back in and select the patch? I like how do you how do you approach it? I find the patch first. And then I just okay. like everything I've recorded so far, just playing that in a loop until I, and then if I'm adding guitar, for example, I'm just playing the guitar on top of that, changing patch, change, changing, changing until I think it's, mm -hmm. it's good. And then I record it. So I, I mix while I go. I don't do that after. I mean, I do some fine tuning after, but mostly yeah. before. I'm a terrible composer. <laughs> Everybody has their own path, man. Everybody does it their own way. I, 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 I try yeah, to find I, the right sounding was, patch too. Yeah, if there was seven or eight of you, you could all just start playing together and then just adjust. But there's only one. That's yeah. true. <laughs> so that's kind of the process that everyone kind of has to take. Yeah. It's like you can yeah, just go together, yourself. mix them as you go, find where the problems are. Like the last one instrument is usually the most compromised. And then it's like, okay, then you take out the first one that you started with and start rebuilding it in with the rest of the mesh and it's uh sort of ladder it up that way yeah, yeah i love it when i select an instrument that is perfectly sounding but it's got an envelope that starts coming out yeah like with a with long sustained note and then you're mm -hmm. listening to it you listen to a quote-unquote semi-final mix like in the car or on your phone or whatever and i'm like the hell is that sound yeah i'm like what is that yeah and i gotta go back into it i spend like 20 minutes like trying to isolate like, what patch is doing this and i'm like <laughs> and i'm like ah shit either i gotta get rid of this patch or i've got to shorten the notes but that doesn't do the job ah god damn like now i gotta go back to the drawing board for that yeah. that sound and it's kind of noise gauge <laughs> no it could do that do i that. mean not all of the libraries we use have descriptive names for the plugin <laughs> so it's like instead of like violin legato it's like yeah mm -hmm. chunky violin or something like that and then you play it and for the first three seconds of holding note it's perfect and it goes like yeah it's terrible <laughs> alchemy is one of them that has a bunch of patches like that yeah like all these big libraries Molto espressivo, yeah. Big, yeah. the big expression. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But that's I where. Did you see what I was talking about? Alchemy's got this like little box down on the bottom or the bottom right that's got like various effects on the main patch that you select. Yeah. So you select like strings, and then there's like different articulations of it, and like based on that, you could sometimes you could isolate the thing that's bothering you, it just won't happen. Yeah. Like you have to just find the articulation. It doesn't have it in it, yeah. which is pretty, I mean, that's, that's cool. Or you just find a decent string instrument from a different. Well, library, yeah, but you know? I mean, I've started to explore alchemy a little bit after the logic purchase. And I, I, I can safely say it's unending. It is, a, it is all so deep that you can't even categorize yeah. things or like I start a category. That's normally what happens when I get a new thing. I'll like go in, take notes on every patch, so I can just go look at my written notes. It's like, oh, I know I'm looking for like an angelic thing. It's like, oh, icy cold. No, that's not going to work. So I find a you know nice warm one. I tried just going through and rating those things, hundreds of them and hundreds of them, and I'm like, okay, useful for this, useful for that. I'm like, oh, just I just stopped. It's overwhelming. There's too many. I stopped I mean, at like FG. Like, and, <laughs> and, and I stopped there after I had dropped 40, 50 ideas down, wrote 40 or 50 tunes and, <laughs> and had categorized the five hearts of like, okay, this is like a three heart patch. This is a five heart yes. patch. This is a, this is yep. a one patch. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I went through the whole process and I'm like, holy shit. I haven't even gotten out of the G's yet. You know, I'm like, I'm like, I need to schedule this out. There's just so much to like explore, and that's yeah. just that one VST, you know. Yeah, that's just that one. There's a whole bunch in there. I mean, VST is like Alchemist, more a jamming tool than a instrument tool. Mm. Agreed. It's like finding mm. something cool, Agreed. and then yeah, yeah. But again, yeah, you're never non-descriptive names. <laughs> yeah, 
ghosts or, from above. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what does this mean? Yeah, right. I mean, like, is there a standard way to describe these things? It's like, you know, slightly metallic sounding bowed wood with funk. Like, what? <laughs> it should be. Yeah. This comes back to the problematic thing we have as composers, as prolific composers, which is, okay, you've you've written, well, for me and Alex anyway, you've written 500 plus songs. What do you name the next ones? You know what I mean? Like, what do you name them? Because at some point, you know, you can only call something, you know, dark ambience yeah. so many different times before yeah. you're like, ah, I got to come up with something a little more original than that. You know, it's sometimes I just find a cool title and that works. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I find a very descriptive type title if I'm not in the mood of finding cool ones. Yeah. Uh, also, sometimes I just ask chat GPT. I've done that. Yeah. I've done that. I'm like, give me 20 titles for um, role playing accompanying music. Yeah. Go, you know, uh, but I named this one on my own. Uh, I, I one of my early D and D orchestrations I did I called Here Be Dragons, and I just liked the way that that sounded and the way that Very cool. the, the way the orchestration ran. It sounded like, you know, a dragon in flight yeah. and like attacking a village or something, you know. So sometimes it comes to you. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that goes for everything. Yeah. How how do you like? So, uh, Programming installations. Uh, oh, go ahead, Kevin. I Sorry. got the sound of uh, bowed wood with a metallic edge here as rendered by stable audio. Let's see if it's any good. Okay. Oh. Yes. Oh. Well, that definitely kind of <laughs> might be correct. <laughs> That's a very uh, descriptive title. <laughs> I think... What did <laughs> Where's the stop button? We need a stop button. Okay. We could... On this end, it sounds like somebody taking their finger and rubbing it across. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the glass. That's what. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it sounds like bone wood with a metallic edge. <laughs> nice. We should hook up our DOS to this Discord window somehow. <laughs> Uh, there are ways. There are ways. There will be chaos. There are ways. So, yeah, are we going to talk about content ID, or do you guys have anything other interesting topic in mind? Um, <laughs> no, um... Unless Kevin's yeah. got something. I mean, like, we already sort of wedged in the tearing pieces of music apart to learn the parts with AI, and, like, that's cool stuff. Uh, so learning the bass, um, I got, I got stuff coming up with that, but we'll do with that next. Right now we're in the planning, ordering and, uh, assembling phases of things. So yeah, what are you gonna but I'm doing some app development for busking. It's going to be a busking rig, bass busking rig. This is new to me. Yeah. 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 It's pretty exciting. Can you explain more? I, uh, I'm I'm intrigued. Oh, okay. So we start with the premise. Number one, take that electric bass. Number two, go out on the street and try to make people happy. All right. Well, you need an amp. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, I got myself an amp, battery-powered amp, multiple inputs, and then I'm like, well... It really works if you have like a backing track, if you've got like drums in there. And that's what I've been tearing uh, things apart for to get at the drum section and stuff. So that I've been making uh, an iPhone app um, where you, you take the file and then you tell it specific points along the file, like at uh, 22 seconds, uh, you know, 0.78. This is the beginning of uh, section A. This is the end of the section A. So you can do like vamping and stuff. And then it loads it in and you just sort of you know, tap along to the next thing or just let it autoplay or you can hold on a section. Really? And it'll just reloop. Yeah. Well, this is super cool. Yeah. 
uh, I don't know how to do that. Chat GPT does. <laughs> and it is working. <laughs> <laughs> so your plan is to like go outside on the street and play? Yep. Nice. Yeah, because I because I, I don't want it to do it wirelessly. No wires anywhere. And because like a lot of a lot of the ways people do it is with loop pedals, guaranteed wires. Yeah. Um and like no, wait a minute. My phone is wireless. Let's put most of the guts of the sound into that and uh, just figure out a better way to do it. I'm, you know, also, I'm also probably going to make just like a generalized sort of drum machine yeah. uh, for the, for the app. But yeah, no, it is so specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that, that portable Roland that you got is, yeah incredibly portable and light it's and it's loud it it carries it is yeah. loud yeah yeah <laughs> it was louder than i imagined it would be i mean it's yeah it's crazy good but so far so the only yeah. wire you need is between the base and the amp or do you have like a wireless connector there as well that would be a wireless connector as well have they uh, uh, so i used it last about 10 well, 15 years ago it, my God! Oh, yeah, shit. Thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, how much was that, Kevin? Thirty bucks. Thirty dollars. Uh, you know, it's got the shitty little micro USB or whatever that is. Uh, that lasts about six hours reliably. Well, you don't. Six eight hours. That's gonna be enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've been running down a couple of times actually. Um, yeah, if you're gonna be playing a lot, make sure you charge. Uh, beforehand but yeah 30 bucks right with, yeah same same with me last time i thought the saw them they're like 600 1200 dollars you know you've got your limited channels you make sure you're not interfering with other things and it's like no nope, those just create an ad hoc uh you know wi-fi connection network between themselves they're the only things on the network and buy 30 bucks thank you wi-fi yeah, no cables. Because before, no cables. Be before you, I think you have to manually select frequencies and all that shit. Yeah, so yeah, uh, many of them, the good ones. Yeah. Might. Otherwise, you get ones that like don't have the frequency selection, then like the guitarist and the other guitarists both by the same brand, and now you're screwed. Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't auto switch, and they're both on twenty five. I don't know. Not it. That it actually did happen. Um, I was playing a gig in somewhere in the middle of Wisconsin and um, our receiver was picking up the karaoke microphone from the bar next door. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so we switched tactics and just played backing music to them singing. Nice. Which was hilarious. <laughs> That's a very good solution. <laughs> that's brilliant oh my god the, uh, your whole set list changed everything changed yep you absolutely it. that's, that's amazing yeah i think that's what i was yeah, that's, what I, that's when i was doing the midi accordion stuff i'm like i can find that key we're fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing <laughs> ah wausau i think it was in wausau wausau if you're one of the 12 people who were at that show you let me know <laughs> I wish I was there. Uh, well, that would have been fun yeah. to see. And it does happen. Not with these, though. Because <laughs> it's all just digital. Yeah. 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 Like most things should be. Yes. Okay, we done? What's going on? <laughs> no, no. I was just oh. thinking all things digital with the exception of. The Gazoopal horn pictures that you printed out. <laughs> Horns. Oh, I still believe it. I love them. Gazoopal horn of the day. I should. We should make a website with, for that. It's not hard. We can get for like four hundred of those things. I think probably what six hours. Six hours of work with Mid Journey and Dolly, and and then you should make like a blueprint for every single Gazoopal horn. So. <laughs> <laughs> trying to explain how it works and where in the process it stops working <laughs> how long before an ai can do that for me <laughs> actually i should be yeah 
I, I, I can feed a gazoople horn to a GPT 4V now and see if it was like, will this horn work? Will it function? <laughs> why or why not? It can do stuff like that. It's just like draw airflow until it stops. Because yeah, some of those p- pictures, it's clear. It's not going anywhere. It's going to nothing, no. you know? <laughs> it's just blowing out like solid metal. It's a ruse. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. here's an example a classic of one of. So, this is just, it's got another. Yeah, well, he's just blowing a... just straight out the the cone. Yeah. Yeah. So, that... the, uh, the, the, the auxiliary drone cone, apparently. How is that? If there was another guy blowing in the back, <laughs> maybe, maybe something. But they both come uh, out of the same. Uh, oh, oh, absolutely yes, absolutely yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so down here, uh, none of this stuff here matters. This thing just goes straight to here. Yeah. Oh, see that. Yeah, it doesn't go through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like all of this over here, this. This stuff, this stuff is decoration. <laughs> it's like a two-person brass bagpipe. You know what I mean? Like one person's doing the drone, and the other person is doing the the individual notes. Yeah. But the person doing the drone is under the control of the individual notes. And I'm gonna say so, something I would never think I would ever say, but I think it's actually gonna sound worse than bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I'm not touching any of that. I'm just not. Although, uh, oh gosh, what's my what's my club my bagpipe club tune? Oh, club so Seamus. Check out Club Seamus. That's actually one of my favorite songs of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bagpipey. It's very bagpipey, but it's all like <laughs> extremely catchy. At least in the beginning. <laughs> Do you remember? I think you've just been hearing. Sh- uh yeah, it's uh it's actually uh, it's built into logic. Oh no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh for my Aeolian horns or no, what do they call that? Aeolian horns? I have a different one. Oh, I forgot what it is though. Yeah, it's in your jigs and reels section. I think you might even be able to find a similar loop in there. Nice. You know, drop a sick beat behind it, and boom, Club Seamus. Yeah, your system is surprised that one. Like, maybe I have to remaster that one now that we have better tools. Just make it a little more present and stuff. You hmm. should start doing that. I should. Yeah, because we can add so much more quality, and like, it's like the tools just didn't exist before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been doing that for yeah. a while, actually. And, um, I mean, it's more for, like, personal usage, I think. It's like, I love this song. I want it to sound better. Because it's, <laughs> it's like, it's not getting more traction on the internet just because, because I've remastered it. Nobody cares about that. Right. But I, I feel like the song des- deserves more, mm. in a way. I think, like, is that going to be a thing that we're going to... Uh, like last summer, I watched a terrible film. Uh, it was filmed in the 1950s. The audio was god awful. You can barely understand human speech. Uh, the video was all blurry. I'm like, how long before we can fix that in real time or like two second delay? You know, if you're watching the thing for an hour, it'll process it the whole time and just make it better. You know, it's like, Update the update the film. Like figure out what the, what their what the audio is. Fix it. Yo, I guess you only need to do that once, and then release the better version of it. Yeah. But I think it's gonna be coming for everyone to do all the time eventually. Yeah. Probably. Well, if you're talking about upscaling, six years longer. Yeah. If you're talking about that, like where you full re- the net- full restoring. Right. Like let's yeah. say you film something. I could tell you from example of something that Tom Seymour just did recently. He had an old, old, old thing he did back when he was like a late teen, early twenties where he had shot on like either like super VHS or just in standard definition. Right. And he was trying to upscale it to 4k. And I think he was using a new processor in premiere. 
that took 24 or 48 hours to process just <laughs> yeah. because that it has to take it, it it was taken like like a second to three seconds a pop sorry tom if i'm misquoting you but it's something like one to three seconds per frame to upscale oh really so oh. so and at a 30 second 30 frame per second you know render that's a long time for like a feature length you know what i mean you're gonna be you're gonna be waiting a long time to upscale it and and to correct it and clean it um so i think that needs that tech needs to get shrunk down to the point where it can process that stuff super fast now some yeah. ai may be able to do that better um but oh, yeah. i'm talking about an adobe product <laughs> adobe's pretty adobe's pretty you know cutting edge so i don't know i mean you know I think upscaling is, there's a lot of ways to upscale. Some of them are better than others. Yeah. Um, but I I mean, like, take it from this was shot on VHS to, oh, no, this was actually shot on IMAX. You know, right. make it look like that in real right. time. What ends up happening with that, though, is that sometimes there's just not enough information, Right. You got to think hey, of like I... filming, you, you know, well, like, right. But you got to think about film and like visual as like pixels and everything. And like, you know, if it was shot at a lower resolution, there's not, sometimes there's not enough. And and the AI does kind of fill in the blanks, but yeah. if there's a finite amount of information, the AI could distort. I don't know. There's, there's, and there's, 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 yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. possible. It's yeah. coming. It's coming. It's coming. I mean, for sure. Uh, Disney has been uh, posting re-renders of their old Disney movies on Disney+. Plus. Uh, mm. I don't know if it's 4K, but it's like Full HD or 2K or something. I don't know. But it's really fun watching those again because that's what I used to watch as a kid, like the VHS of The Lion King and whatever. And now I can yeah. watch those in like super good quality on, on Disney+. Plus. But... Uh, so I think the technology is there and I think fixing the audio is definitely easier than fixing the video. Uh, yeah. And we can def like we can do both of those things now. So I, I guess if you have the enough processing power, you can do it on the yeah. fly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also, uh, apparently they're re-releasing Star Trek Deep Space Nine uh, upscaled. Nice. Nice. So, but it's like, it. it's so weird other, though because... Yeah. Like, Watching that in good quality now, it just feels the same like it did when you were a kid, even though you watched mm -hmm. 420p or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> this looks real. Oh my God, the animations are so good and you're on fire in your <laughs> the refrigerator or something. It's terrible. Well, you go back and watch an action film like Die Hard or Predator from the mid 80s now. And I mean, visually, it just feels dated, you know? Not only yeah. visually, but the but the pacing and everything. Like we watch things so much faster now. Yeah. It's like, you know, my daughter has no patience for all the movies. <laughs> we we showed her E. T. She was bored out of her mind. She was like, E. T. is a boring film. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so slow. It's like, and I'm, I walk. I went back and watched it. I'm like, I have a different memory of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Like I thought it was amazing when I saw it. Do not care for it now. It did not age well. well. Yeah. Well, those are the things that we've been seeing for the first time ever. Like, the effects were just outstanding. It kind of threw you, right? Yeah. Right. And now it's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can. I did, did that with a GoPro like yesterday. I didn't even wasn't trying, right. you know? <laughs> you know, it's not a, a rough shot. Off on my phone that does that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I remember running. Yeah, well, I got a helicopter too. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I remember running up uh, Omaha Beach on my PlayStation Two, playing Medal of Honor Frontlines. Mm. Yeah. I was just astonished. It was beautiful. It looked like I I was there. But then I replayed the same game twenty years later, <laughs> and it's just like a bunch yeah. of square people with bad movement and bad sound and everything. It's like, right. it's so weird how this thing evolves without us really noticing it until we go back. It's like the first Tomb Raider. Everybody was gaga yeah. over that. This Tomb Raider's great. It's just so <laughs> bad. It's so uh, bad. The mechanics sucked, you know? Everything's you so get wrong. stuck in a corner, you gotta move around so you can go forward, you know? It's so weird. 
like these like small changes happening every single day and it's like suddenly it's just it's just a new new era but it is yeah, i'm very much looking forward to uh when things that look like mid journey will be able to process you know 150 frames a second so you can actually play games yeah. Yeah. in mid journey rendered worlds it's like like that's going to be great <laughs> yeah We're actually we only need about 60 frames a second and then we can interpolate that's cheaper yeah <laughs> anyway i'm gonna need 144 minimum Min yeah <laughs> abs oh oh mac i'm not gonna take that away from you mac yes yes how the hell do i get past 85 hertz on the mac your monitor my monitor is one is not okay but the mac setting in my my mac settings is uh 685 I was hoping you would have like a, oh, that's how you fix that thing. But you're both, you're both my, very confused. Mine's at 120. Um, uh, are you plugging it in through the display port or are you plugging it in through I, uh, old, old HDMI table? I was going to say, uh, I only have a HDMI input on the Mac. Wait, HDMI output from the Mac? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. input on your monitor? uh output on the mac yeah except uh those usb c things that is display port and they crank a lot of data out there so my monitor is hooked up through display port oh yeah because so i got a display port to whatever that monitor takes i forgot yeah so it's like uh like uh yeah usb c to display port yeah yeah okay because the thing is that I can't sacrifice the USB or the Thunderbolt output for a monitor because I need that for the hard drive. Right. You have one hard drive. You have one monitor. I have two hard drives. I have one monitor. I have two Thunderbolt. Two, two hard drive. Yeah. I can only have one of them hooked up at a time. <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> okay. That makes sense. So is there a... Yeah. HDMI, like I, I've tried to research this HDMI 2.1 cable, mm. uh, and that should be able to transfer uh, 240 hertz or something. But I will look up what I ordered. This is more Kevin's wheelhouse. He's he's the one with the 57 inch curved monitor. Yeah, right. So, 8K. Uh, <laughs> Look how small it is compared to <laughs> <laughs> compared to us. Look at he's way in the distance. He's like engulfed by water. Oh no, that wasn't HB. It's um is it thumb? We can add it. He's hanging out as his composer Noel over there, you know? <laughs> Under the tree. Yep. Looking focused. Because that that's why like I'm used to 144 hertz or more. 85 seems a little, a little blah, you know? A little, a little blah. I mean, 30 is no, but uh, 30 is no. 60 is actually no, too. Yeah, I'm currently running, uh, what, what is it, 120 at 8K. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, display port is my go-to always but i don't have the, yeah. the slots for it so i have to run hdmi but i'm not yeah. sure that works like there is probably some sort of limitation on the hdmi output on the mac but there's there's a limit is how much you can go through that cable i thought so the cable try limit maybe try turning down the resolution and see if you can turn up the re the refresh rate yeah yeah again don't know but i mean we're trying we're trying mm -hmm. i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna ask gpt have I'm gonna have answers for you next week because I'm gonna buy absolutely it. HDMI 2.1. I know that supports high frame rate at both okay. 4K and 8K. So and my screen isn't even 4K, so it should be able to do that. See, I didn't even know this is oh. a problem for me because now suddenly I'm looking at mine and it says 60 hertz, and I'm like, I have a monster yeah. monitor here that <laughs> Kevin's letting me use. I should figure out why it's not performing. Uh, because it there's was, some reason for it. Yeah, it was designed to. It was designed for a 60 hertz frame rate. That's what that monitor is designed for. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, it's I not mean, a it's beautiful monitor. I mean, it is a beautiful it, monitor. 
Yeah. Usually have to sacrifice good resolution for frame rate or the other way around. But I mean, yeah. that that monitor has insane resolution, right? And yeah. HDR yeah. and all the all the pluses. Yeah. Well, the ups the upside is that I don't game on this, so like, yeah, you can't. You don't. No, no, no. I don't need to refresh <laughs> for that. So, yeah. Do you not buy the uh, what is it, the Apple Pro display to game on? It's not no. a good gaming monitor. <laughs> it does look really pretty if you want to watch other people game. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, st- <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the file transfer. My uh, all all my Cubase project one point two terabytes is currently transferring. It's been transferring for I don't know two hours, and we're about <laughs> halfway there. Wow! Oh, all right. From a, that's a lot of data. That's a lot of data. <laughs> I joke around about this all the time, Alex. In 1985 or 87, I got my first PC to write music on. It was a IBM clone called, it had an 8088 processor in it, okay? That processor ran at 4 megahertz, 8 if you press the turbo button, okay? <laughs> There's a turbo button to double it. The reason for that is that a lot of games were DOS based, and if you had the turbo button on, they were imp- they were impossible to play. They went way too fast, so you had to take the turbo button off, right? But here's the big here's the clincher. Yeah, because you didn't uh, write timing into the video games. You just as fast as you can move the character, move that character. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but here's the clincher. It was a thousand dollar computer at the time, and no monitor, nothing. Like the computer, the box was a thousand bucks. Five hundred of the cost, get ready. Five hundred dollars of the cost was a twenty megabyte hard drive. <gasps> oh my megabyte. god, you had a hard drive? I did. Oh okay. I did. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you have to do floppies all the time, that's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a twenty megabyte hard drive. And that was five hundred bucks of data on that thing. Yeah. Uh, well, nowadays. Well, not nowadays, <laughs> but back then. Yeah. How how big yeah. was the floppy? Um, I had. Did I? One point four megabytes. Oh, is that? Yeah. Did I have the for smaller ones? The oh. the the uh, uh, well the set then they had like the bigger ones the five and a quarter were like seven hundred k. Yeah. Sometimes they were double sided, double density. Even that was seven hundred, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Double sided. And you got around it by Retail. taking the hole puncher on the other side. You could take a normal disc, right? And you put a hole puncher on the other side, invert it, and shove it in there, and you could record on the other side. <laughs> you guys are so old. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, we need to stop talking about that. So, uh, what's going on now? What's going on now? What's new? <laughs> what's yes, happening? Yes. Oh, my God. You go. Yep. Yeah, I was talking about AI. I'm not that old. I'm seriously. <laughs> You're staying with it, unlike most people. Just yes. <laughs> Tim. Wait, yeah, I don't know what, a, what that was directed at. I don't, I, that, that, never mind. I'm not both the fight. Both not my not not my job. But I'll I'll fight. <laughs> I love the new stuff. I absolutely do. Like, but, I mean, there's a lot of people on your age, like both of you, that are still closer to the floppy disk. Oh, know? God. Uh-huh. I couldn't possibly. No. No. It's the no. latest and greatest. Give it to me. Yeah. Right? Let's go. You know? Anything that's going to make things easier or just the latest, newest tech, yeah. you know? Kevin and I would literally sit down and watch some of these videos and just pause it and just kind of stare at each other like, oh, my God, what I could have done with this. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> What I could have done, like, oh, what I'm going yeah. to do with it now. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, yeah, what I am actively doing yeah. <laughs> every single day. It's like, I, I, I love the new tech, but I don't love it until it works. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't automatically acquire the newest, you know, because there's a, there's a little time period before the newest become actual stable. Yeah. And I, instability, that's, that's the fucking worst. That's that's a pain in the ass. Yeah, that first generation. Ooh. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it, it can be tricky. It's like yeah. new games as well with flawless graphics. They look like you can't distinguish the game from reality. It's so unresponsive and sluggish. You know what? 
Are you gaming on this Mac? What is going on? I am confused. This is... I'm not gaming on the the Mac is over there. Oh, okay. This is my <laughs> game. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the game on the Mac. Mac is <laughs> studio only. Music and film. Okay. Oh, got it. Speaking of film, Final Cut Pro. Yes. That yeah. is a very, very user friendly, interesting software. Mm -hmm. And it's like, again, the resource hungriness of Windows apps or software, like Premiere. I mean, I haven't yeah. tried running Premiere on the Mac because I, I'm not going to say I owned it illegally, but um, it was an old version. You don't need it. Don't need it. Yeah, you don't need so, it. So I've been using Premiere for a while and again, learning all the hotkeys and everything and all the tools and blah, blah, blah. But apps on Mac are just, Buy, install, and then it works. You're done. <laughs> and the hardest part is that it's really great the icon. watching someone do this. <laughs> the hardest part is dragging the icon into the folder. Yeah. To say, yes, I want you to install this, please. You're... <laughs> that actually confused me at, at first. Yeah. To drag the app into the application folder. But it's... The... But like... You know, yeah. It's not like that. You just get it out of the app store then. Yeah. Windows, you got to like, okay, is it in the right directory? Is it, why is that? No, it's on the computer. Yep. That's all, that's mm -hmm. all, you know, iOS wants to know. We're, oh, okay, I'm installing it. Great. And I'll if, find it for if you. If there's some sort of big preset library or effects library, you always have the option to install, install that externally. As long as the app itself is yep. installed on the main directory, you're, you're good. Right. Yeah. And yep. the thing I also notice is that with Mac apps, you kind of, you buy it once and then you're set. Like if, if you buy yeah. Premiere for about the same price, you will have to buy it again in a couple of years because they don't update their software. Right. They don't buy... they have a subscription? Yeah, they do now. Yeah, they do. But yeah. I have okay. not seen the price on that thing. Jesus Christ, the, the full package with Premiere and everything. I think it's like fucking over a thousand a year right oh yeah yeah well uh, yeah like if premiere gets the same sort of ai stuff that photoshop is getting but like video yeah yeah i'm just gonna buy i'm just gonna buy it, but it yeah i'm saying that <laughs> yeah. and it's like oh here's my family reunion but everybody's on fire <laughs> like, i want that you just type in that and it's just whatever <laughs> like if that's enough and that is a thousand Oh, it is a thousand dollars worth of fun just right there. Exactly. Yeah, but I, I, that's I don't need Netflix anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna make my own entertainment. <laughs> oh. I went to a park and it was raining anvils and pianos. It was crazy. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that Mac apps are better, uh, because I mean the technology in Adobe products are just insane. But then again, it's very expensive. But it's yeah. the amount of things you get and how long it takes before you have to worry about it again. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I bought Log I bought Logic once, twelve years ago. I got updates this week. Yeah. So. So you've, I mean, you've more value in your money than I had with Cubase because, like, I've been buying new versions every year, and it's like. It's, uh, it gets expensive, and it's not that the yeah. versions don't work because they do. But I mean, instead of updating stuff, they just pile all the cool stuff into the new updates and then sell it to you. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that's the challenge I think with uh, the native instruments uh, uh, complete. Right? Is that you get like contact version X, whatever it is, right? And then. Eventually, BSDs start programming for a, like the latest and greatest version, and it forces your hand to upgrade to the next thing. Which, in which case, like for me personally, there's been versions like two, three generations ago of Contact that I'm like, this is fine, this is fine the way it is. <laughs> like, I, you don't need to do anything else. Please stop, stop trying. Contact to Five improve. was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, stop it. But then something new comes out for a project that you want to do and they're like 
well, you need the latest and greatest. Well, at least now they have a free version you can download that's like the latest. So if you just want to have an instance oh, really? to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think they I think enough people got pissed off. They're like, look, I don't I don't need another version of complete right, right. now. Like hit the brakes. I just need to use this VST. You know? So I uh yeah. I've had like thirty two bit uh VSTs and VST twos that I've been using for probably 10 years, and I love them. Mm. <laughs> uh, they don't work anymore. No. Not supported in Cubase <laughs> or Logic. Mm. It's like all VST3 now. I wonder if there's an emulator that you could they, pull it in. They, I know that Logic had one that would open up 32-bit things back in the day. Uh, I think it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's that necessary anymore. I mean, these VSTs were yeah. stored on my hard drive for many, many years. And yeah. Hey, you know, it's time for a new sound, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Get rid of yeah. the nostalgia and yeah. make something fresh. That's what I'm thinking. And also, and then then you could use the auto master button. Then yeah, I'm great. still looking for that. <laughs> I'm looking for that button. Okay. <laughs> I haven't found it yet. I'll uh, I'll show you where it is. Uh, yeah, there is um, there's a web uh, a website with a a mastering tool on it. You ever use eMastered? That's what I'm using. Yeah. Are you using that right now? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Because the, the subscription is pretty cheap, right? Right. You just. It's very cheap. Yeah. I used to use yeah. the launder. Okay. Uh. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Whole different story. Very expensive. Ah, uh, I I actually have. Uh, I built a mastering thing where you give it a reference track and then another track, and then it matches the sound of the mastering on one track to the other track. I got it working, but I never published it on Incompetech. Uh, there's a there's I I don't know. Is it useful? No, well, I mean yes. If it works, yeah. it's super useful. It works. You are. You should publish Please, it. Please, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's, can we have some more? Sir. I mean, it's a Python thing. You can get it on GitHub. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe in January. Maybe I'll publish that in maybe. January where you can go out and ask for stuff. Make the interface very user-friendly. No scripting or anything. Just, like, drag and drop. Yeah, drag and drop. Oh. I was just going to say. Yeah. And then it will just give you a zip file back. Perfect. Yeah. You know, people are going to be like, there's got to be some like sort of animation. It's like after it drags and drops. Because people are going to be like, why isn't it here yet? No, it's like, it's going to take like three <laughs> minutes. This is doing big calculation. And I only have one tiny server. I want a so. fancy loading wheel and a smiley face that wears mastering. I song. Come back in a few minutes. <laughs> I, yes, let's do that. Nice. We got it. We got it. I think it's a good idea. Uh, very. It's like provide enough input. And okay. it, I assume it's gonna cost me less than eMaster, even though. Uh, I literally free. There's yeah. no. There's no license thing. They open sourced the uh the 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 model. Yep. So cool. Nice. I'm down for trying it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Usually I have some sort of reference track that I feel like my song should sound like. I actually got a reference track from you when I was putting that together in the first place, and I was going to include that as one of the presets. I remember. Oh, nice. That. Yeah. How long ago did you work on that? Four hours. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> I guess I booked it. It was earlier this morning. What was I no. doing that? Uh, it was over summer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Active work time, though. Four hours. Oh, God, no. More? 20 minutes. GPT-3? <laughs> No, GPT-4. GPT-4. It's like, okay, download this thing. Um, you know, here's a, here's a script. You know, give it the name of the file. It opens up. The, it, like, it's a, it's a shit interface. <laughs> <laughs> it's command line right now, but it's just Python. We should be able to roll that up pretty quick. I think, yeah, uh, th there's a lot of tools that are available that we should be using. At the same time, I kind of want my... I, I kind of want to do most of the work on my own, you know? Like, I, I tried mastering my songs for years and years <laughs> until I realized that, okay, I suck at this, so I'm going to yeah. source it. But so far, that's 
So I think that's all I've. And the good thing about that too, Alex, is that most of the most of the software instruments that we use are pretty well balanced, right? If you if you bring them into you know you 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 play your parts or whatever and you adjust the volume, a lot of times you put it where you want it in space. If you decide you want to do rather than just panning, you do the what's the one where it's like it's literally like three D. Um, oh yeah, you can put anywhere in the room. Uh, but once you have it positioned, like running it through a process, like you're saying, like with that, with that website, it just cleans everything up, makes everything a little sharper, right? Everything, everything has its own space better. Whereas before it's kind of muted. Right. Right. Um, well, what else do you really need? Like, that's just like, just do the thing, like right. just process it. Like, I don't. Why 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 spend hundreds of hours learning how to do that when something else will just handle it? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And I also realized mastering is a very, very important part of making a song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you master early on just to make yourself feel better, don't forget to master again when you're done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Things have that. changed. Like sometimes I master a song that already has a um, master plugin on the, mm -hmm. on the master channel. <laughs> yeah. For some <laughs> styles, it works. Not for all. This was such a good song, I double mastered it. <laughs> all in. We didn't even start talking about copyright. <laughs> no. Or not copyright, the uh, YouTube thing. Are we holding that for the next episode? You're going after it now. I you got to think I want to talk about it now. Okay. okay. So to explain, as not to be disrespectful, but I really need to go out for a smoke break. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but... um, should, I, should I? What? Should we pause? I don't know. No. This is terrible. You don't pause when you can edit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what year are you in? Jesus. <laughs> Just keep. You no, know, we had that same oh, problem last week. God. We were like, we, we we paused and we're like, God damn it! Why didn't we catch that? Yeah. Like mm. we just we just had something we dropped that was gold. Yeah. Never mm. stop recording. Exactly. Never mm. stop recording. I. Can we we can put this bit at the end of the recording and everyone can make fun of me. That'll be great. I mean, last time you just casually walked out on the. I think that's in the live podcast too. Like. Oh yeah, yeah. I just casually walked. Kevin on the balcony. Yeah. Mm. Where'd Kevin go? Oh, he's taking a break. He's still on. It's he, a little I mean, louder out here today, so I can't really hear it. I don't hear the. I don't hear the roosters. Oh, great! Wait, if they're roosters? actually there. And oh, so oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a big thing about Ebor. There's just like errant roosters and chickens just running around, run amok, and they just they they live on the street. There are nobodies and everybody's at the same time. Yep, and it's it's, and they roost. They'll jump up on roofs and roost once the sun starts going down. It's amazing. But first thing in the morning, if I like had an early morning delivery or we were working first thing, and I come by his place, you're like I'm like walking up, like it's a sudden just screaming That's awesome. at us from across the street. It's awesome. It's awesome. I want roosters in the neighborhood. It's so much recommended. Fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like just joy walking around. Yeah, right. They're little shitting ambassadors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's time they stop traffic. They're just standing in the middle of the road, and the roosters mm -hmm. just staring at the car like, "What are you gonna do? What, the fuck you huh? doing? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna stand here as long as I want." The people will show, and it's like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Sometimes like a so like a pedestrian will like go out to sh to shoot yeah. a chicken or two off the street. <laughs> Uh, but they did, I mean, they help with cleanup. Not that this is a dirty city at all, uh, but, uh, you know, people drop some pepperoni. That's not there in the morning. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, bird shit. How, how disgusting is it really? It's, you I never really see, see it. it. it no. It's like just a windy day and it's gone. I think they shit in the grass. Oh, awesome. yeah. I've seen more human shit on the sidewalk than I have. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That's worse. Which I shouldn't have to say out loud. And I shouldn't have to say that sentence. <laughs> that is no one should say ever. But that's a real thing. I was leaving on a weekend night to go to the parking garage, and there was something 
that somebody sidestepped and I'm like, ugh, what's that? And then another <laughs> person walks past and it's like, yeah, that's so and so. Human shit. She's always <laughs> she's always shitting on the sidewalk. I'm like, all right, that's a conversation I didn't need to have tonight. <laughs> oh, the U.S. <laughs> Some interesting characters out there. I mean, that, that's a good that's a good short right there. <laughs> <laughs> what to drag that one out? No. Do people need more stereotypes about Florida? I don't. I think we're good. We're like a whole lot. Yep. Do we need a 13 second YouTube short where we're talking about human shit in Florida? Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, God damn it. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's like one of those things people can scroll by while sitting on the toilet, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can relate. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I, I shat there. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys ready yep. to, to talk about the content ID and copyright? Sure. Oh boy. Oh boy. This, here we go. <laughs> okay. So as most of you know, we release our music royalty free, which is always a problem. Uh, because that means that no one really owns the music other than people saying they do. So... In the end, I guess we have the proof that we own the music. I've never like had to show anyone a project file or anything, but I mean, right. that's the end of the line for proof. <laughs> but I mean, what if your music is not copyrighted? It means basically that anyone can copyright it. They can I stop? Yes, uh, here because terminology. Uh, anytime you make something, it is copyright you. You get all the things. It is copyrighted by default. You can choose to give away those rights. And we choose to give away a lot of those rights. Uh, but it is copyrighted. It is always copyrighted by you. But, like, with copyright, you get the right to uh, uh, collect royalties. Yeah. And we say, no, we do, I do not want that part of copyright. Okay. Right, so it's mm -hmm. more of a intellectual property than it is actual, like, there's not an online tag for your music that it, yeah, like, it's copyrighted by you, but... Right, but you haven't registered it with anyone. Right, so it's just That's like right. a, it's floating in the air, it's like a, it's yes. almost, <laughs> yeah, so it's impossible to actually, I mean, it's, whatever. It... <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Difficult subject. But the problem is that people can register it as copyright. Right. Because And take those rights. Yeah. Like royalty collecting rights. That's the one that screws exactly. everything up. And that, mm -hmm. of course, is illegal because it's it's specified in the terms of where you copyright it that you are not to copyright other people's intellectual property. Yeah. But uh, going past that is very simple. You just tick, a, <laughs> you just tick a box, yeah. right? And then you register uh, another composer's song uh, under your name, and there you go. There, there's your copyright. Now it's like yeah. registered as your song on the internet, which can become mm -hmm. a huge problem for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now when people use our music in their videos, for example, um the label that now holds the copyright will claim that video on the behalf of the lying thief that stole the song. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for uh, clarifying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, I've been struggling a lot recently with this uh, more and more actually over the years, but I've recently had a case with the Orchard, which is one of the very big labels that we have to deal with here in Norway. And, uh, someone took like a huge playlist with my music in it, copyrighted it through the Orchard. And now everyone using those videos, including myself, are getting copyright claims on YouTube because like, I'm mm. not the owner of this song, even though I am. Right. So what I've been researching lately is like, are there systems in place for me to avoid this? And uh, I came across a guy uh, named Damien, a Dutch guy working for a company called Frequency Music. And they do copyright your music for you, but still makes it possible for us to 
let other people use it. Look at the kids. That sounds awesome. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> I am suspicious on multiple levels. Like, I should <laughs> do that. The That's thing? exactly what I need. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, most people have probably heard of Content ID, which is YouTube's uh, own integrated copyright system. Uh, right. And it, like, uh, through bots and, and stuff, analyzes videos to see if there are copyrighted songs in videos. And if there are, then they put a claim on it. So that revenue from that video goes to the artist. So what I've been talking to Damon about is uploading my music to their system and um, simply making it impossible for others to do that. Registering okay. my music and content idea. Because it's happening so frequently now that it's getting hard for me to do my job. I have to deal with these fucking copyright claims all the time. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, it just takes a lot of joy out of the whole process because you're trying to give your music away and it's <laughs> fucking free. You don't have to pay anything and that's fine. But then addition, you get people contacting you. They they haven't like they haven't paid you anything for using your music, but they have right. written your name in the description so that you get some sort of marketing for it. And now they're getting claimed from a huge ass label like the Orchard or Sony or whatever. And they're getting terrified because now their their career is uh, compromised. So one lying thief caused thousands, tens of thousands of uh, problems yeah. for individual people. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. okay. And that's why I'm considering Brilliant. using this platform. What would that mean for creators? Once they, what once you do that, it's like well, how how would how would that how would that work out? So the system is built right now so that you are able to whitelist individual channels. So if you get a channel ID, uh, you can place that in a whitelist, and that channel will be immune from claims forever. Excellent. Until you take the whitelisting away, of course. Yeah. Um, and I. I like, I, I can't see how that's going to be. I, I think this is going to be positive for everyone. And yes, people might receive a claim, but it's my claim. It's coming from me, which making it, it's making it possible for me to deal with a claim. I can go into the website. I can remove that claim manually mm -hmm. um, instead of having to send, what, three emails to Orchard in the dura duration of... Uh, <sighs> 12 hours asking them to remove these claims. Okay, so if I'm a creator and I put a video up on YouTube and I don't happen to be on your whitelist and I do what I'm supposed to do under Creative Commons and I put the in the description of the video your contact information, the title of the song, the Creative Commons licensure and everything else, will I get flagged? Nope. That's... Uh... Uh, what you do, you can have like either. I think you will. No, you won't. Oh, because when I upload a song to the system, I can add like a unlimited list of keywords that if those keywords are found in the video description, they will not post a claim on it. Okay. So if I write. But when, when the person uploads it to YouTube before the claim is considered. Will it say this matched something in our content ID database? No, because I... Will it give them that warning? I think the... First, YouTube needs to send uh, data to Frequency Music that content ID registered music is uh, is uh, registered in the video. Yeah. And then I think Frequency Music has a delay before they actually analyze that video for, uh, for issues. Okay. So when, uh, when are you going to get this up and rolling? I really want to see how this works. I, I'm going to work on it for, I mean, all up until Christmas and then after. Like, I'm going to get everything in place. I have already posted on my Patreon that I'm considering this. And I got 
Uh -huh. Literally 10 responses within four minutes from people that, oh my God, I would love this. Because these people are getting claims all the time from okay. other people ah, that right. are not me. What about this situation, okay. Alex? What what if, I and I, I, I'm asking about a very specific thing, but it's also for the benefit of the creators out there that might be listening to this. Yeah. So they use a song. They use um, song A in in the video. They make a mistake in the description and they reference song B. Will they still get flagged in that situation? No. And they, and because I'm going to include a, a common keyword in all my my songs in the system okay. that is just my name. So as long as my okay. name is in there, uh, it doesn't matter if some of the other keywords are wrong. Okay. So if Alexander Nakarada is one of the keywords and they happen to write it correctly, uh, yeah. which they probably should, then uh, they will not receive a claim. So you can have like, you can have name, title, uh, uh, website link, um, any keyword you want. And as long as those words are found in the description, the system will not post a claim to them. I hope this is as automated as I think it can be, because otherwise you'd be trading like three emails a week for 300 a day. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> yeah. So let's hope it can be automated. I, yeah. I've. And what does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean for other creative platforms? Like, what does it mean for... Um, like Facebook or TikTok or any other place. So the but thing like I asked him about is that for now, it's a very easy for me to whitelist YouTube channels. Um, mm -hmm. It's not as easy to um, whitelist Facebook pages and Instagram accounts. However, they do also offer distribution like DistroKid. So mm. if you distribute your music to them, you are able to whitelist Facebook and Instagram accounts. So ah. I am thinking that I'm actually going to pull my music down from DistroKid and distribute it through them instead because it goes to all the same places, but they take 20% of the revenue. Uh, DistroKid takes none. So I'm going to lose 20% of revenue from DistroKid, but I will be able to protect yeah. Facebook pages and Instagram accounts, which are a huge part. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm willing to sacrifice those twenty percent of revenue from for being able to protect those people. That makes sense. Another problem though that I've realized later is that if someone because my music is used a lot of places other than YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. It's also used on mm -hmm. Twitch. Uh, it's used in game mod packs. Yeah. Yeah. So if people are playing a mod pack, recording that. <laughs> and uploading it to YouTube. Oof. They yeah. are under no no place in this process are they asked to credit me. Right. Right. Um but I mean this is still a case now. Like if the Orchard now content ID registers my song, they're also flagging let's play with videos if that song is used in yes. outside. So I mean the problem doesn't really change. Right. The only thing that changes yeah. I'm in control of the claim now. I can release the claim. And if I have to spend like 30 minutes every day looking through claims and releasing them, that's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the administration process of managing a 550 song catalog. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, and the worst thing that can happen is that people uh, use my music, they don't credit, and that's fine. Maybe they did a mistake. They will receive a claim that is in like in includes the information that you are receiving this claim because yeah. the description lacks this and this. Then they can add this right. information. Oh, nice. Dispute the claim and it will be automatically deleted. Awesome. The more I talk about it, the more it makes sense, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be like, I'm going to give it, I want you to try it out for two weeks and then I, uh, I got some ideas. So I might have to move over there my own self. Yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of people on YouTube who use my music without attribution. Um, spoiler. Uh, I really <laughs> haven't. Uh, you know, like when people email me, it's like, oh, yeah, do I have to include it? It's like, yeah, but nobody <laughs> does. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they don't know where they got it half the time. And again, it's like videos of videos. Exactly. And, and I mean, it's like you can't 
can't keep that pedigree all the way down. That's the other thing, too, is that some of the shorter form content, it's not necessarily like designed to have all that fluff. I mean, a YouTube channel yeah. with long form videos has a description, and some of those descriptions, I mean, they just roll. Like, you got to scroll yeah. the page, yeah. right? You know, a short or a reel or a TikTok, it's got a no. little, little section <laughs> of information. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, the challenge there being, well, how do you reference that if it's not in a drop down and you didn't select it on like a mobile device to select that song to use in the thing and edit on there? Because you could do that, like you could like a TikTok, you can edit and cap cut on your phone and yeah. and upload it and then drop down the menu in TikTok and find a song from Alex Nakarada or me or right. Kevin and drop it in there and put it in the right spot in the song. Yeah. Boom, right? Because it's registered with the platform, right? Um, it's when somebody has it in the video, uh, they they already have it in the video, and they can't select it from there. They still have to do the reference. So that's the only thing. Is like there's a couple steps. There's different steps on different platforms, and I think that that may pose a challenge, but maybe it won't. Maybe it's won't. Maybe I'm making it more complicated than it is. You know? Yeah, but that's good. That's good. Oh no. It is kind of yeah. It's complicated. Us. It's like, like, oh, we'll solve all this. We'll solve. Uh, what is the thing? Get rid of copyright. Yeah. Just yeah. Get yeah. rid. Of, I would yes. solve everything. Yeah. All these problems. Yeah. We would yeah. make happiness. We could make music. I don't know how we make money, but we could make music. <laughs> and sleep, sleep well. That's yeah. Yeah. Fun. And then well, people it sounds like join it, and they wouldn't have to worry about it. There's just like mental overhead that's slowing down society. Well, a big chunk YouTube. It sounds like this, this engagement, this relationship that you're building, or starting to go down this path, um, would solve a ton of problems on YouTube. Absolutely. And if that's where you're getting yeah. most of your problems, then this sounds like a win. Yeah. You know, that's like <laughs> yes. The only issue is that I don't really know what my biggest platform is, and I'm not mm. sure if this would cause a problem or not. But I am definitely willing to try it just to like avoid the only issue I have right now, which is people copywriting my music. How? Wait a minute. How do you... Do we have... Is there some sort of analytics that people use? Well, there's to social... Find out aid. There's social, social aids. Aids. Yep. You can, you can go there. But I don't but know that, if there's one. Won't tell me like how good my channel is doing. Right. It won't tell me how good my songs are doing. Right. Um, is there a ten thousand foot, you know, analytics that yeah. looks at all different platforms? I guess if you register yeah. I mean, with one of those how many views do we get on TikTok? How many views do we know how many views we get on TikTok? You can check um I mean you you can't I don't think you can say a thing. But on DistroKid, you can see like the uh, total impressions of individual songs. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And that that comes out every month, you know, in arrears. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I don't check that. Maybe I should. But you should because it's probably going to be a lot of <laughs> results. Yeah, kind of like could be. the demographic thing, Kevin. You know, like where's the traffic coming from on YouTube? You know. Like we talked about yesterday, you know, for, for the 1.8 billion listens in the last 28 days of your music, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. 1.8 billion listens in the last 28 days. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a number. That's a number. She was, that's a number. Oh God. It's, it's 82% of which. <laughs> 82% of which came from shorts. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. What did you get this? YouTube, YouTube shorts. In uh, YouTube studio. Okay. If you go in there. So you actually uh, get to see impressions. Oh, actually, like, not just how my channel did, but like everywhere my music was used, it's in there. Yeah. That's cool. That's very Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, and it may have, it may, the factor, Kevin, may be in mm. running off that, that, chunk and catalog we talked about that you had uploaded specifically to youtube so it may be very unique to your to your um song set you know what i mean uh, because okay. you've got 
like five to six hundred on there from that like thing that. in 20, uh, 2015. And yeah. they may be doing analytics off of that. I haven't dug deep enough into it to understand mm. how they're doing that. Fair enough. But but it, it would make sense that since that's part and parcel to your channel, it's they're probably running analytics off of those. Okay. That makes sense. Neat. Um, is this no, was the no. uh, FTP thing you <laughs> talked about a few years back? Is this and that? Uh, no. Okay, that's a different thing. May maybe. I don't know. It's like a whitelist FTP <laughs> you used once to try to whitelist. Yes. And use it. That's the same thing. Right. I I don't think it can be. Okay. I don't think they would write an analytics thing for me if I didn't even know it existed. No. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> I mean, is that how it ended up in the catalog? That maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like your style. Yeah. Eight, yeah. At uh, one point eight billion. Uh, I don't know. What else? What uh, uh, where do? How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. It's, 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 I don't want to know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's that the fact that like, you know, there's a high double digit percentage in Indonesia. Of listening you know now whether that's you know a vpn running through there or if it's you know what i mean like like i don't know like but yeah, it's just you can choose to believe that indonesia loves me that's what okay. i choose to believe nice 30 percent coming from indonesia that is they are outperforming the rest of the world and they deserve some shout outs yeah good on you indonesia yeah. Only 12, 12 and a half percent is US based. 12 and a half percent. Yeah. Oh. 12 and a half percent US based. <laughs> the rest of it is Indonesia. anywhere else. Yeah. So Indonesia is Indonesia, India. Um, no, how much is Indonesia? What's the percentage on that? Oh, God. I'll have to go to my other computer because that's where I'm logged in <laughs> uh, to look at that. But uh, okay. So the US is 12 percent. Normally the yeah. US is 80 percent. Yeah. It's 12. Yeah. 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Well, tw we'll give you the half percent. Okay. All right. At least so that's what it said for the last 28 days, you know? Well, hey, you know, maybe um, maybe it's maybe it's time to move to Indonesia. Uh, you know, I'll take a look around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was there like 10,000 islands out there, yeah. you know? There's, yeah. there's 10,000 islands. There's like, like 20 that matter. Right. Um, There's a... There's over 700 different languages spoken there. Uh, yeah, I'm just seven, gonna do English. I'm just gonna go with English, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure that's gonna go. again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn any of the any of the languages. Yeah, new island, new language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> somebody will speak english i'm sure we can find it somebody. yeah but once you start if you like get off the plane and after five seconds you get recognized then you know like the analytics are working from yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely right or just Although, find out if the most popular <laughs> vpn in the u.s is through indonesia might be right <laughs> right indonesia. right prop pop okay and that might be true you know what I still choose to believe that Indonesia loves me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's just a VPN glitch. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is a real thing to consider, right? I mean, it is. we yeah. reroute things for our own personal privacy, right? So, you know, granted, anybody with some sophisticated devices can literally circumvent that and be like, no, 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 you're, yeah. you're in Detroit. You're in Detroit and... We know where you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Detroit. Actually, no. I'm in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I'm often in England. Mm, shit place, but and you. Australia. Don't don't get beat up by the hooligans. What? Whoa, oh, hooligans! <laughs> the hooligans and all their shenanigans. And what's what's the other? I just want to say, to all of our British listeners, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Alex doesn't it's, know what he's talking. I've about. been he's there. Regents, <laughs> you. You know how they are. I'm just angry at every other country. No, how could you be angry? You have a national pension system. You know? Like, I don't know. I in universal I haven't seen Universal that. healthcare. No, universal healthcare? Yeah. What? From when I when I hey. on the ice or freeze to death? <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, Tim, universal healthcare, that's not like a big thing. Like, because everywhere else in the world has it. I know. I know. <laughs> and aren't you glad you're not in the U.S.? Yeah. A lot of it's, it, it's fine, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like Italy, I think, is it Italy that has like free healthcare, but it's shit? Italy, actually, Italy has one of the best uh, outcomes for longevity uh, oh, per really? dollar. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, they they are near the top. Wine and olive Maybe oil will do that, but your... they just live. Wine and olive oil will do that for your arteries. Yeah, you know. Yeah, apparently it's fine. Pizza yeah. margarita. Yeah. I've had them yeah. sometimes. And I mean, I feel so good afterwards. <laughs> it's like no meat, but it's like carbs, just carbs and fat. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So no, don't forget, forget pizza is a great thing. But you just reminded me, it's like, can we make a pizza margarita? So, like, the cocktail, <laughs> but with pizza oh, stuff in it. <laughs> kind of like a Bloody Mary. You ever see I, the yes. monster I Bloody Marys? I, They're, like, this I, tall? I know, please. <laughs> yes. I've seen one. I come from the way tall. Bloody Marys. <laughs> that, that I've seen one this tall with, like, a rotisserie chicken on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 literally, like, you can just take pieces off of it. You know, there's like a full thing of celery drifting. On. Like I'm like, oh yeah, who's drinking that? <laughs> 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 I'm I'm gonna guess that was from somewhere in Madison. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a super Madison maneuver. They would absolutely do that. I need a little hair of the dog. Well, this is good for the rest of the weekend. Why don't you have this? Yeah, <laughs> Mad Madison, Wisconsin. Get yourself a <laughs> chicken margarita, chicken bloody mary with. Cheese, chicken, chicken, <laughs> chunks of dough, and <laughs> cheeseburger, popcorn. <laughs> they just, they just, they don't call it a margarita. And they're like, "Here's the fridge," you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, Here's drink your breakfast. <laughs> so because if you a sausage stick in a Bloody Mary is a pretty good idea. Also, cheese, like mozzarella, yeah, yeah. in a Bloody yeah, Mary, sausages, a really good idea. <laughs> Cured meats and cheeses. Yeah. Like a... Yeah. Like a French hot dog. Just dip it in. Yeah. I okay. say like a... We do like a charcuterie plate. Just like put it all in a blender with that and just... <laughs> just inject it straight in. It's like... Yeah, it would be like a boba tea, but with just like chunks of this cheese. And... Boba tea is fucking disgusting. <laughs> I've, I've heard this thing. I haven't tried one. I probably should... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even know what's in it. What what the hell? It was just like little sugar balls? Is that what that is? Like, what is it? Basic. Ta okay. Tapioca. Um, Where the fuck did it come from? Like, why, why is this suddenly, like, amazing? And, like, you're like, oh, yeah, boba tea. You know? Well, I mean, we'll find out because there's boba tea right next door. So, you know, if you ever come okay. downtown again, we're just going to get your boba tea and then we'll find okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's do it. I'm all about Let's do some the experiments, Don. Let's let's make some content. Let's just I freaking think have, I, have a I tea. I can and... actually tell you what your face is gonna look like when you drink your first bubble tea. It's gonna be like <laughs> boom, like that because it okay. tastes really good. But once you get those tiny balls in your mouth, <laughs> oh boy, it's just weird. Like, am I eating or am I drinking? Right. Yeah, depending on where you clip that, that could be an excellent YouTube short as well. And like in the middle of my ugly face. <laughs> no, no, there was you're just talking there was you a specific you tiny balls in your mouth and then <laughs> like none of it got better. So <laughs> <laughs> not like you know, I can't even I can't even tell if I'm eating or drinking. I'm like, oh God, oh dear <laughs> God. <laughs> That's what it is. It's tapioca, isn't it? That's yeah. the, that's, that's yeah. the reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little tapioca. Yes. And my father was in the tapioca pudding. So if it's like that, mm, I I could probably it it is really okay. It's yeah. worse. Way better. It's no no way better than oh. tapioca pudding. Okay. Okay. How oh, is tapioca anyway? Tropical fruit thing. Is it deal thing? Job. I've never okay. harvested it, but yeah. harvest. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on the island, one of the islands of Indonesia, harvesting tapioca. Indonesia's <laughs> got some tapioca. <laughs> you know what Indonesia does have? 
nutmeg. Really? really? There was one island in the world that grew nutmeg, and it was in Indonesia. So all of your... Yeah, the, all the nutmeg came from that one island. Yeah. Yeah, you want your pumpkin spice latte? Thank Indonesia. Thank you, Indonesia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My holidays are complete. <laughs> I'm I'm considering like uh, instead of a long week in just a entire week. Oh, yeah. could be. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? It's quite a it's quite a plane ride. So well after uh, after yeah. you scheduled up. <laughs> Wait, is who knew your pumpkin latte was a warm hug from Indonesia? Who knew? You know, I didn't. No, yeah. is Bali in Indonesia? Absolutely. That's wow. Geography one hundred and one. No. That, I mean, you just blew away everybody else in the world because, like, anyone who goes to Bali thinks Bali is a country. It's like, no, no, <laughs> not a country. I'm just an island. By oh no, kidding. <laughs> places people think it's a country. It's like, like right. I mean, but now what the hell is Svalbard? I don't know. <laughs> what, what the fuck is Svalbard? Is that a country? I don't know. It's like they have their own tax laws up there. Well, I think we own them. I th they in the Arctic Circle. Yeah, I think I think you got half of it. They're like the Russians, maybe you've got a camp on the other side, and then it's mostly bears. It's just bears. Mostly bears. Yeah. Is it bears and subterranean oil? Like just all of it? Like mostly, all the oil? Yeah. And very nice tax laws. Well, yeah. <laughs> no one wants. Um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, the ship, like, they don't have Amazon Prime. Norway doesn't they, even have Amazon. I can, get, <laughs> no, they do not have Amazon Prime. Yeah. Those can move to a place without Amazon Prime. That's, that's, that's tough. I'm doing fine, and I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the gritted teeth. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I'm fine with that. I like paying twice as much and waiting twice as long. Just requires a little more planning, right? Right. Yeah, that's what I love to do, <laughs> plan things. <laughs> well, if you're moving to Svalbard, I mean, you had a plan to move to Svalbard. Oh, you don't just yeah. accidentally get on a plane one day. You will probably go shopping for groceries once a month, I think. Mm. I think I would have to just live in a grocery store. I don't know how else to deal. Like, I don't know where. <laughs> just sleep in the room in the back. Probably not a lot. Probably not a lot of uh, nightlife. Not a lot of restaurants. I you know, know. A lot of things going Eaters. on at night. <laughs> like your neighbor. Northern, Northern lights. Northern, Northern lights. Neighbor is running from a polar bear. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of action. Bit icebergs. Have you ever heard a seal getting eaten by a polar bear? No. I would assume they get eaten by polar bears. They do, and they that sound is not pleasant. Have you witnessed no. it firsthand? Not firsthand. <laughs> oh no. I've seen the I've seen the documentaries. Ah. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, of all bear encounters, <laughs> apparently polar bear encounters are the worst. They are hungry and they are angry, yes. Yeah. And they are more carnivore than their siblings. Yeah. Yeah, because grizzly here in the northwest of the U.S., yeah, they can be really aggressive, you know? And black bear, which are more like the East Coast, I mean, they're all over the place, but they, they're pretty docile. And if you get, like, big, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you'll scare them off. Yeah. Unless their cubs are around, you know? But I think you wouldn't want to do that with a... Polar bear. Polar bear does. Polar bear would be like, yeah, come here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, try to act big. Ooh, it's scary. Let's talk. Uh, no. After I drown you, yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna tear you apart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play with your corpse. Yeah. Okay. Well, this guy's just really stay away from all bears. You just stay yeah. away from bears. This got macabre. Yeah. Really fast. Yeah. <laughs> just stay away from bears, everybody. Whether you're a seal. Whether you're a person, just stay away. Yeah. Yep. Super good. I'm we'll get rid of copyright. That'll solve that problem. We got rid of the bear problem. Just stay away. Yep. <laughs> I'm a seal and Tim's a person, so you you cover yeah. everyone. Yeah. Kevin's uh, apparently oh, living wow. at a grocery store. <laughs> Kevin's apparently in living in a grocery store, store in Norway. <laughs> you probably rent one. We don't know if it's Norway. Yeah. <laughs>
I mean, they probably sure. make as much every month as you pay for that apartment. So you can just rent it for the same price. I would think everyone up there is making a gobs of money because they all work for the petroleum industries. We don't all work for petroleum industries. On Svalbard? Oh, on Svalbard. <laughs> I was talking Svalbard. Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about that place. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Like, <laughs> <laughs> much like Bali. Yeah. Yeah. Part of Indonesia. Same. Learn something new today. Also, that's yeah, right. All part of Boom. Yeah. There's the, there's the show plug right there. Yeah. You know, Indonesia has done pretty good at like uh, taking care of their islands. Maybe you should see Svalbard to them. Maybe they can uh, do some good things for it. Put in some high speed rail, maybe yeah. uh, infrastructure improvements, a lot of solar. Maybe we can just buy Indonesia <laughs> and then like make it the, the warm Svalbard. Mm. Oh yeah, get a get a, get an island exchange program back yeah. going. It's like get like part of there. And say, yeah, it's good it's good times. Yeah, getting an image. Yeah, look into this. Look into the Svalbard. Uh, so I'm gonna learn everything about Svalbard for next time. Getting Indonesians <laughs> to em emigrate to Svalbard is gonna be a hard sell, I think. You know. That's that that acclamation to yeah. the weather. Yeah. That's going to be rough. Other way around. On the other hand, the traffic in Jakarta does really suck. The traffic yeah. in Svalbard, no problem. What yeah. traffic? <laughs> what, roads? Nice. Yeah. what roads? What roads? What ah. roads? <laughs> what car? <laughs> I'm stuck behind the snowmobile again. Yeah. <laughs> the snowmobile. Yeah, the snowmobile. <laughs> Let's be very specific with language. Yeah, it's very important. <laughs> okay, we should we wrap it up there? We have passed two hours. I'm good. I know. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens. You know, I look forward to seeing what happens for you, Alex, with this new endeavor. For sure. Yeah, I'm you not know? sure if I'll be up there uh, the next time we speak. Probably not. But I'm, I'm going to start looking into it. Solve the problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if it solves that problem and it doesn't isolate the creators that love using your work that's what i'm hoping i couldn't show you this because i was propping up my uh oh the camera battery yeah, yeah, yeah amp oh that's the amp yeah yeah she's it's super light like it doesn't it, it's bulky well well it's 12 kilograms maybe not quite eight kilograms what <laughs> I, I whispered I go I thought it was light <laughs> of course you did yes <laughs> oh person who runs and is active and shit <laughs> Ugh. one of those <laughs> health well, well, those. well I, I do it enough to like survive keep the ticker going yeah. you know so yeah and I've been on like a week or so hiatus yeah. so wow well I'm gonna start to get, I guess I could put it on like a like a backpack or can, no I can't I got a base here so that one shit <laughs> of course you can make a backpack just two leather straps yeah. and you're good nice. over the shoulder a little harness yeah. can you videotape that you walking around in Ebor playing bass for people I'll catch them nice I'll, I'll, I'll catch yeah, I can do <laughs> yeah it's hard to do a selfie stick when you're playing an instrument so you would think they're you're gonna look like one of those one one man bands you know yeah it's got like the bass drum yeah. in front of them. Yeah. Hi hat on foot pedals. <laughs> <laughs> the great Alex Meissner once uh he's an accordion player, once did a commercial for Hormel Pepperoni or something like that. Yeah. And uh they had one of those rigs and he played accordion whilst uh had a bass drum and hi hat going by walking around. That's awesome. That's really weird, Hormel. Or like you know, you got it's like, oh, we need an accordion player. Oh. We'll just get like the best one and then make them do something ridiculous because honestly, even the like one of the best accordion players, you don't get a lot of money. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a, it's not like NFL quarterbacks, right? You know, yeah. where there's like an elite tier that demands like thirty million. Yeah. Accordion player uh, demands thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> I see a bro. Yeah, it didn't hear. <laughs> right. Some of the best accordion players I've ever seen have been at German restaurants. They just yeah rock. There was there was one in uh, New Britain, Connecticut, that was just phenomenal. He could play anything, 
and it was like he would play like renderings of like the current pop songs to like old traditional yeah. stuff, everything else, and just just rip through this thing. You saw this accordion, it everything was faded and like you know the oh the yeah. keys the keys were like they had all the imprints from from his the oil on his fingers like that thing was played. <laughs> All right, I guess all we have to do is say goodbye and then good episode. Like good episode. Push buttons. Yeah. Today I say that with no irony. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Kevin just pops in outside. Sideways, Kevin. <laughs> Hello. It is a video. It's a picture. Uh, yeah, this is it is a video. Well, till next and time. And again, Kevin. I should I gotta go get some food. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think running these on low blood sugar might be helpful. So, uh, later. Okay. See ya. Got you. Later. Bye bye. Right.